Welcome back to the Back to Space News Flash. I'm Danielle Dallas Russa, and we will be talking about things that are currently happening, things that have happened, and things that are going to happen in space. First off, I want to start with a huge thank you to Reddit. Oh my goodness, it was amazing. I was just overwhelmed to see all the constructive feedback and also the constructive criticism. Yeah, I'm not feeling it. Very forced and not very funny. You're calling this forced? I understand. I learned an important lesson. It's not low. It's I-O. All right, let's get started here. Oh, wait. I don't need these papers because I got a teleprompter. So, this past week, Elon Musk showed off his SpaceX Starship. Ooh, Starships. Elon celebrated his Saturday by providing a Starship update, saying, we want to make space travel like air travel. SpaceX planned Starship is a towering reusable launch system envisioned to carry up to 100 people at a time to space. That's a lot of people. The Starship craft will launch atop a giant reusable super heavy booster. Goes to the gym, super <laughs> Okay, both vehicles are designed to return to Earth and make vertical landings much like SpaceX Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. And they could be starting to fly commercial missions as soon as 2021. What year is it? It's 2019? Are you serious this is happening this soon? The first operational flights will likely launch communication satellites, but there is a cruised Starship mission on the docket for 2023. A Japanese billionaire went ahead and just made that his his thing. But I think it's super cute. It reminds me of the Iron Giant. Aww. But like, cooler. That was a good movie though. SpaceX has steadily raised over $1.3 billion in equity over the year, provided to keep funding for the spaceship program. I want to say this, and I want this to be on the internet. If anyone wants to give me a small percentage of that, I would be fine. Just one million? Anyone? Okay. Stunning new black hole visualization from NASA illustrates how gravity distorts our view. Ugh. Do you guys remember going to a carnival and sitting in that mirror and it like makes you wide and then you think you look like that for the entire night? The visualization stimulates the appearance of a black hole where infalling matter has collected into a thin, hot structure called an acceleration disk. The Soyuz rocket blasts off into the International Space Station with multinational crew. Expedition 61 crew docked to the ISS safely on September 25th. How cute is this? As the hatches were opened, the families of the newly arrived crew members and American, Russian, and Emirati space officials viewed activities from the Banakur, hang on. Baikonur, Kazakhstan. I'm not making that mistake again. They offered their congratulations to the newest residents of the outpost. Another update from the ISS, astronauts have mixed cement to pave the way for colonization on Mars and the moon. Guys, they're paving the way with cement. <laughs> Astronomy.com included this little tad bit in which I'll read a little bit about it. But interestingly, the researchers discovered that the space station's lack of strong gravity made the space cement form with surprisingly uniform density. Meanwhile, while back on Earth, the cement mixed in the control experiment developed a more layered structure due to gravity induced sedimentation. And yet another headline about the International Space Station. Okay, ISS, I see you. A robotic Japanese cargo ship successfully arrived at the ISS Saturday, September 28th, carrying more than four tons of supplies, including new batteries for the outpost solar powered grid. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, also known as JAXA, possibly JAXA, HTB-8 cargo ship pulled up at the space station at 712, where it was captured by a robotic arm wielded by a NASA astronaut inside the orbiting lab. The station and HTB-8, also known as the Kunatori-8, and Kunatori, assuming I'm pronouncing it right, means white stork in Japanese. We're soaring 262 miles over Angola in Southern Africa at the time. Japan's HTV spacecraft are a part of the robotic fleet of spacecraft designed to ferry fresh supplies to the ISS. So let's go back in time. In 1966, September 29th, the second planned manned Apollo flight crew was named by NASA. The prime crew members were Walter M. Shira Jr., Don F. Eisel, and R. Walter Cunningham. Backup crew members were Frank Borman, Tom Stafford, Michael Collins. The flight was scheduled for 1967, and it would be the first space mission for Eisel and Cunningham. So today, I want to talk a little bit about NASA spinoffs. 
This is the definition of a NASA spinoff, a commercial product and service which has been developed with the help of NASA through research and development contracts. Okay, so in 1979, a notable science fiction author, Robert A. Heinlein, helped bring awareness to spinoffs when he asked to appear before Congress after recovering from one of the earliest known vascular bypass operations to correct a blocked artery. In his testimony, reprinted in his 1980 book, Expanded Universe, he claims that four NASA spinoff technologies made the surgery possible. They have so many technologies under categories such as health and medicine, transportation, public safety, environmental and agricultural resources, and industrial productivity. Here's the history of just a few, temper foam. This was a result of the program design to develop a padding concept to improve crash protection for airplane passengers. Ames Research Center developed what is now called memory foam or temper foam. Also LASIK. This technology comes from the 1980s effort for autonomous rendezvous of docking of space vehicles to serve as satellites. LADAR, L-A-D-A-R, was used in the military and NASA sponsored research for applications in strategic, target, tracking, and weapon firing control. LASIK is now a technology that is used by doctors to track eye movement at the rate of 4,000 times per second while reshaping the cornea. I understand that this operation has helped a million people. The thought of that going into my eye just like really freaks me out. Honestly, I think it's important is that we recognize that space travel does 100% help enrich the technology we use on our day-to-day -day life. Space is important, guys, okay? Got it? And now, the future. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like we're living in a science fiction book and I'm not mad about it. NASA is to build a new asteroid hunting space telescope. The agency announced last Monday that it plans to build and launch an asteroid hunting telescope as soon as 2024. I am really excited about the 20s, guys. A lot of things are happening. This is going to be part of a new multi-prolonged approach to the planetary defense. Pew, 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 pew. The yet-to-be-named telescope will use an infrared detector to pick up heat signatures of small near-Earth asteroids against the cold backdrop of space. Hello, Dr. Smile Friend. I'm an asteroid coming to kill you. Guys, comment on what you think the name should be. I think Maya is a great name. NASA, Maya's a great name. Do you like space? Huh? A NASA presentation says the telescope will find 90% of asteroids wider than 140 meters that have a chance of hitting Earth within 10 years. <laughs> right now, only a third of those asteroids are cataloged and none of those pose a threat for the foreseeable future. However, an impact by one that we haven't found could wreck a country's scale destruction and cause more casualties than any disaster in recorded history. I actually collaborated with the Space Channel about this asteroid that might hit the Earth. It is super fun and it's coming out soon. So just to let you know, you should check out thespacechannel.com. Bill Nye the Science Guy, we all know him, we all love him. This is what he said, quote, this may prove to be the most important investment ever made by NASA. Orion update. NASA is setting in motion the Orion spacecraft production line to support as many 12 Artemis missions, including missions that will carry the first woman and next man to the moon by 2024. I guess we're just going over the fact that we didn't really feel confident last week, but now they're super confident. Okay, I'll follow along. The agency has awarded the Orion Production and Operations Contract, OPOC, to Lockheed Martin of Littleton, Colorado. Spacecraft production for the Orion program managed at NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston will focus on reusability and building a sustainable presence on the lunar surface. This contract secure, 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 this contract secure, this contract secures Orion's production through the next decade. NASA is designing shape-shifting robots for Saturn's moons. Mini robots that can roll, fly, float, and swim, and then morph into a single machine? What? Together, they form shapeshifters, a developing concept for transformational vehicles to explore treacherous, distant worlds. These things look like a drone encased in an elongated hamster wheel that rolls a across the yard, then splits in half. Once separated, the two halves rise on small propellers, effectively becoming a flying drone for aerial exploration. What? These 3D printed parts are only the beginning. The team imagined a series of up to 12 robots that could transform into swimming probe or a team of cave explorers. The flying amphibious robot is part of the early stage research program, NASA Innovative Advanced Concepts, NIAC. Back to space announcements. As we were saying, we're gonna highlight each ambassador at least once in these videos. This week's research provided by super smart group one ambassador, Joey. Joey's a high school sophomore who can talk theoretical physics 
physics, cybersecurity, or programming on a college level. Okay. He's also a natural athlete who literally bounded up the nearly 9,000 foot Guadalupe Peak this summer and trekked Death Valley in an attempt to recover the Back to Space balloon. You can actually see that video. Back to Space ambassadors Crystal Horton and Christopher Franklin attended the 57th annual enshrinement to Aviation Hall of Fame to support our very own Apollo 16 moonwalker Charlie Duke, who was inducted. They spent a little time with shuttle astronaut Guy Blue Ford, who was also inducted. Also, we had a recent collaboration with Aviation Daily. They're a great Instagram channel and you guys should check them out. That's it. That's all we got for today. I want to let you know, again, thanks so much for the support, Reddit. Thanks everyone so much for watching. Again, I'm Danielle Dallas Russa. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Why don't you tell us what your favorite NASA spinoff is that you'll use on a day-to-day -day basis? Also, next episode, we're gonna be answering some questions. So please go ahead and leave a question and the most liked question will be answered next week. Thanks guys.